Okay, I'm Andy Neil. I'm. I'll show you things around me. Mishmash, I looked it up, apparently, according to Wikipedia, it means a confused mixture. So that's probably what this will be. I'm a geographer, but I play with IT. I train people to use IT within my own school, I have done previously. There is links. And when I keep meaning to use in my classroom, I never quite get around to it. Just some of the things that are probably going through my brain at this moment. Actually, they're probably not going through my brain at the moment, they were earlier. I had a nice argument with the child at lunchtime that that wasn't how you spell Skype. And then I had to get Skype on the phone to show him it was right. But there are various things that I'm playing with at the moment. Who am I? I'm a geography teacher. Uh, nice picture of me with beard. That's my explorer look. I have it occasionally. Um, I started in Essex 1988, so compared to you skip people, I've been doing this job for a while. I like to try new ideas out, so Penny knows me because we've worked together in Avery for a few number of years now. I like to use things that enhance learning, especially for geographer, and I'll come back to that in a particular picture. I like collaborating. I got hooked on Twitter last year. I've been using Facebook for a few years and trying to run an international geography group, which worked in terms of talking to each other, but we nobody ever shared any resources on it. On Twitter now, I don't know if I'm going near 5,000 tweets or something, I don't know. I talk to too many people, I spend far too much time on it, but it's great. I'm a dad, which Liz knows, away from me Liz, because she's, she used to work both on kit for my kids. Uh, sporty, I'm not sure why I put that on there, it's not really relevant, and I do lots of other things. There we go. Twitter. I love Twitter because I like collaborating with other people. I belong to a network of geographers, I belong to a network of people who use e-learning, I talk to people across the globe. I put something up on LinkedIn two days ago. I've already had an offer for one of my students to go to a summer school in Egypt. And yesterday, English Heritage wrote to me saying, hey, <coughs> project, please get in contact with the following person. If I was just sitting in my school talking to my fellow staff, they'd just look at me blankly. This way I get to talk to lots of other people. So if you don't tweet, please do. Penny will confirm that I tweet various obscure things, something geography and other things. But it's a great way to meet with other people online. It is something you get into or you don't get into. I, the first time I went on Twitter, I didn't understand it because it used to be the thing that, you know, Stephen Fry's just picked his nose, so what? Now I use it as a PLN, this sort of professional learning network, and I'm trying to get colleagues at school to go onto it. Some of them are now on Twitter, they don't actually tweet yet, they just follow other people, but it's a start. I'm a geographer, so I like pictures. Top left is a nice picture which I first saw about nine years ago in the Sunday Times in the magazine. It was three inches across by two inches tall, and I thought, what a fantastic picture, I must get that into my classroom. <coughs> I can photocopy it up to A4 size. I can put it yes, because while I did that, and I used it, and it had some impact. Two years later, I got my first interactive whiteboard and I put it up and it had a six foot diameter and suddenly the picture came to life because the kids could come out, grab the pen, draw over it, label what they could see and suddenly pictures meant something again. Because as a geography we use loads of textbooks but the photos, even if they're in colour, don't engage the kids very much. If we can put them on the board and we can get them to draw on them, annotate them, then it starts to mean something. Satellite <coughs> photography, something that we used to dream about in geography, we knew that you could get it if you were a very rich school. Now you can go anywhere you like and you get hold of it on Google and so on. I've used it with maps and field work. The bottom is a, a viral video that went out last summer, which became the starter for all my Year 7 classes this year. It was a nice sort of thing for setting, setting off epileptic fits as a man travels around the world and did a viral video. Out of that, we have a sort of perishing stock of videos in my school, which are gradually dying. We have video records in the department. So we thought, let's start doing things differently. So we set up, or I set up a, a YouTube channel for the school geography site. The idea being, we can use it in the classroom. All the teachers can use the same videos. Kids can go on to YouTube and actually see the videos we've used in class afterwards. And that started quite well and is starting to be a success in getting some feedback. And I'm now getting some pupils involved. The bottom line is a staff training one, because my other role is I do cross-curricular ICT training, and we're starting to use that to share videos with staff who find the IT still frightening, and trying to get other ways to get them engaged with using their interactive whiteboards and other things. VLE, they are Penny, Fronter. Something easy. Um, I teach in, in Havering, we use Fronter for our MLE. Um, my first job was to run departmental rooms, which is what the top one is, with a nice video 
that somebody I met on Twitter made for my school, it was very kind of them. I'm now down to the point of sort of doing my flip charts and putting them, saving them as PDFs so I can put them up so the kids can download the work from the classroom and then use it at home and annotate and bring it back. I'm trying to get them to download the software for free, copy the premiere for the software so they can actually produce stuff at home, upload it, and they can then come teach it to the rest of the class off the board. That's the next step. Um, again, collaborative documents. We use it for homeworks. It still hasn't taken off as much as we'd like. The problem with doing classrooms for sets is I have 12 classes. Updating 12 rooms a week is a nightmare. The fact that I run about seven other rooms doesn't help. But it, it is a good tool. I'm glad to use it. Having used RM sort of networks in the past. Uh, this is my new thing at the minute. I use my iPhone in the classroom. Yesterday I was translating into Polish simultaneously while teaching. We think the words were correct. It kept the Polish students happy. Um, I'm doing assessments this week. I've just translated my year eight assessment into French, Norwegian, Romanian, Lithuanian, and the year nine one into Polish. And tonight I have two Polish assessments to take home, type back into Google Translate, so I can mark their work and I can actually interpret their understanding rather than their English literacy skills. So that's what I used. Uh, There's an old one I found about five years ago when I had a Russian student for the first time in Avery. Translating something with her, you had to buy the software. Google's fantastic, it's not fantastic, it's not always accurate, but it works in the classroom. Okay. And it's amazing. Oh, okay. Right, latest investigation. Somebody noticed earlier, yes, I'm into Apple toys now, I, I avoid them for years. Um, I'm starting to use the iPad, I got my iPad for Christmas, and it hasn't been at my classroom since. I use it to try and share apps with children, so on our MLE pages, I recommend apps that I use, generally free ones. It's a conversation style from children. Quake in the bottom corner I was using with a class about earthquakes the other week. So we looked at, saw what was going on, we looked at the thing, we found an earthquake that happened that day, five hours before the lesson. We went into it for the next two lessons I could update them on what had been happening. We could easily look at different boundaries on it because it had a lot of data. Top one is a thing called Earth Buzz, which that's not a brilliant picture of it, which has live weather data which again brings the globe to the children and a fairly sort of static thing. But that's it. I, I mess around with ICT. I love it. It makes my job a lot easier. I just wish more of my staff at school were into it as well. Thank you. Thank you.